Hello and um, welcome to this lesson. It is about diffusion. Um, this is Mr. Singleton, one of the associate directors for Artwood Academy. This is the specification again, so we will be touching some of this um, later on. We might touch these in in a couple more lessons, um, but we're definitely going to look at what diffusion is. We will definitely look at how we can change the rate of diffusion, so how we can make it quicker, and then some of the structures that we would find these in animals and possibly plants. So a bit of a recap on the previous lessons. We've done about the lungs and the small intestines. We haven't done about gills on fish yet. But what features or what features do these structures, so what the features the lungs have and the small intestine, and in this case gills of fish have, which allow them to do their jobs as best as possible. Remembering that the lungs need to get as much oxygen into their body, into the bloodstream as possible. The small intestine is trying to get as much glucose and um, minerals and uh, digested food into the bloodstream. And the gills really are doing the same as the lungs. So try and think back what the structures in the lungs that help it to do its job. What are them structures in the small intestine that help it to do its job? I'll give you a minute to have a think about it. Off you go. Okay, so some ideas. So remember, the, the lungs have those alveoli that them air sacs, which give them a larger surface area, and the small intestine have that villi and the microvilli on there, which also give it a large surface area. Gills also have something called lamellae, which give them a large surface area. So anywhere where you're trying to get things into your body quickly, usually a large surface area is a really good way of getting as much as possible in. Also, they all of those structures have a really good blood supply. So that means that blood going into the lungs, uh, which is full of carbon dioxide, it will release all of that carbon dioxide and then pick up blood uh, oxygen sorry, very, very quickly and move it out the way so that more oxygen can then move in. And there is also this short pathway to the blood. So in the lungs, they have this very thin one cell thick um, pathway so the oxygen doesn't have a far distance to travel in order to get into the bloodstream, which makes it a lot quicker. And that's the same in the small intestine. Those villi have a really good blood supply, but they're also quite thin to get as much of those nutrients absorbed as quickly as possible. And again, the same with the gills, it works the same way. So these three things that we're looking at here, they're all really good features this large surface area, this good blood supply, and the short pathway for to the blood. They're really good features in allowing things to move across and into the blood really quickly. So today's lesson is about diffusion. So if you're doing your title in your book, you want diffusion as your title. Don't forget your date and underlining it. and the challenge and aspire so the challenge is to describe the process of diffusion and say what diffusion is and the aspire is to explain the factors that affect the rate of diffusion which we've kind of started to look at so think about back when you've been in the classroom and you've got this little boy here who has passed wind well that little particle from his backside is not going to stay unfortunately by his backside because unfortunately that little particle is going to move and someone's going to end up smelling it so the fact that that particle can move is and that's what diffusion is the particles moving 
from where there is lots of those particles to where there's not as many. Now, just to add to that, there will not be just one particle that comes out of that boy's backside. There will be lots of particles and they move in all different directions. So it's a random movement of particles. And you see now where the boy is, there are three of those particles. They are going to move out to where there is not very many of those particles. And we say that's from a high concentration where there's lots of particles to where there's a low concentration. So where there's not many of those particles. So one particle might go over here, the other one might go up to this um, person's nose and this one might shut her off down here. So they will move off in lots of different directions. It's completely random, but it is from a high concentration where there's lots to where there's a low concentration where there's not many. So if you want a textbook definition for diffusion, it's the random movement of particles from an area of high concentration to lower concentration. That will be on the theory of revision card, so you don't need to write that down just to. So where does this take place in the body and why does it take place? Well, without diffusion, none of you would not be here. So oxygen has to diffuse into the bloodstream from the lungs. Now remember when you breathe in, you have about 21% of that air is oxygen and that is going to go into the lower concentration which is in your bloodstream but also what your bloodstream is bringing from that heart is lots of carbon dioxide more carbon dioxide than what is actually in the air that's in your lungs so there's going to be lots of carbon dioxide in your bloodstream and that's going to move into the area where there's not very much in your lungs so that means then you can get rid of your carbon dioxide and you can get some oxygen into your body to respire. Glucose is also another one which diffuses into the bloodstream. So there will be lots and lots and lots of glucose from then products of digestion when we've talked about breaking down starch. There'll be loads of glucose in your um, small intestine and not very much in your bloodstream. So that will move from the small intestine through the villi and then into the bloodstream. And then again, oxygen will diffuse into cells from the bloodstream. So your cells won't have very much oxygen and they will take the oxygen from the blood into the cells and carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the cells into the bloodstream. So these are the things that keep you alive. That's why it's so important. Okay, Google quiz time. Let's just recap those bits. It's really important to know what diffusion means and where it takes place. Off you go.
Okay, 30 more seconds. So, in order to make diffusion happen quicker, this just goes back to what we said before at the start, you need a large surface area. So the lungs have a massive surface area. They've got about 500 million alveoli, those air sacs, in order to increase the surface area to make diffusion happen so much quicker. Also, you don't need to know it's into layer level, but they've got this really thin layer of cells called a squamous epithelial. And that just means the oxygen has such a short distance to move, so it's more likely to move into the bloodstream. And also the carbon dioxide is more likely to move into the lungs. And we call this maintaining a concentration gradient. So as the oxygen goes in, it's going to mean that the concentration in that blood gets higher. And if it stayed there for a long time, then not as much oxygen would move in. Because remember, diffusion is from a high concentration to a low concentration. As that oxygen comes into the blood, it's going to increase that concentration. So it's going to be a very high concentration. If it moves that blood away quite quickly, then the next lot of blood behind it will be a low concentration of oxygen. So then more oxygen will come in. Okay, so that's what we mean by maintaining the concentration gradient. Now, this is the villi. This is the small intestines of somebody who have celiac disease. And if you look at the normal person, they have all of these villi, these lovely finger-like projections. And then if you look at a celiac disease, um, it has become flattened. So what would that do on diffusion? So what it would do to diffusion, hopefully what you've come up with, is that it decreases the surface area. So therefore diffusion will be much less. So those people will struggle to have, um, to get the nutrients they needed in, into their body. So another Google quiz, have a good go at it. I'll give you three minutes, off you go.
So if you're making a revision card, these are the bits that you need on diffusion. You need to know the definition, which is the random movement of particles from a high concentration to a low concentration. You need to know where this happens. So it happens in the lungs, in cells, and in the small intestine. And you need to know how to increase the rate of diffusion. So that's a large surface area, a thin pathway between the two places you are moving that uh, gas from, and to maintain a concentration gradient. I'll give you three minutes if you want to write any of that down. Again, you can pause the video and write it down if you wish. Okay, and once again, there's like some exam questions for you to do. Print them off and write, answer them, um, and then hand them in to your teacher. Good luck. Well done, guys.